we're going to start off with this flower image here. And what we want to do is select the shape of this flower. And we've got some decent difference here, uh, very different color on the flower than the background, so that's going to help us out. Um, and selecting things in Photoshop is a real art because there's so many different ways to select things. Um, of course, you could come here to your rectangular marquee tool or elliptical marquee and draw a selection on, but that doesn't really approximate the shape of this particular flower. We've got a lasso tool here, a polygonal lasso tool, and a magnetic lasso tool. So we could feasibly come and draw, um, using one of these tools, uh, draw around the shape of our flower. But it just so happens we have a brand new tool here in CS3, the quick selection tool, which makes short work of selecting something like this. This quick selection tool is actually now with the magic wand tool, both having the similar keyboard shortcut. So quick selection tool, I select this. A couple things before we get started, we wanna turn on auto enhance up here in the options bar, and we wanna make our hardness 100%. So we want a nice hard brush to select this from. Now to use, the quick selection tool. All I have to do is draw on what I want to select here. In this case, I'm just going to start drawing on this flower. And I just drew a little bit and then stopped, okay? Because we've got some ways to kind of refine what it is that's being selected here. If you hold down your Option or Alt key and then click on the background on what you don't want to select, that will help Photoshop to isolate what it is you do want to select. So I clicked over there, again, hold my Option or Alt key down, and then click out here. I don't want to select any of this background here. And so it goes through, does a little processing, and now I can come and click on the rest of my flower here, and I can just quickly draw this, and it will go and select the edges of my flower. And it actually does an amazing job right off the bat but we have the ability to refine this a little bit. So we new, have a new button up here, Refine Edge, if we click on that. And let's look at our options here. If you roll over any of these sliders, you're going to see an icon down at the bottom to represent what that slider will do. Okay, give you kind of a visual clue as to what it's doing. Let's go through them. Radius is going to determine the size of the region in which the edge refinement occurs. Okay, so we can make it larger, and then we're going to refine the edge over a wider area. Contrast is going to sharpen the selection edges and remove any fuzziness. So if we have any artifacting, that will get rid of that. You can see when we drag it to the right, it increases the contrast within the radius of our edge that we're refining. Smooth is going to get rid of any peaks and valleys. So I'll take this to the right a bit and make it a little more exaggerated. Feather should be fairly obvious to you. It's actually going to feather the edge. Contract and expand is going to do exactly what you would think. If I drag this to the right, it's going to expand my selection. So you can see I'm now selecting outside of what I had currently selecting. So in this case, I'm selecting part of my background. And to contract is going to be bringing in my selection and now digging into what I had previously selected. Down here we have a few different ways of looking at our images and we select this left one to take us back to what we were looking at previously before we jumped into Refine Edge. So we have our full image and we can see our, our marching ants around our selection. Click on the second button to take us into Quick Mask. So if you're used to working in that mode this will take you there. We can also map this over black if we have, say, light colored background as a contrast. Or we can map this over white if we have a dark background. And then this rightmost button will actually just show us the mask. So we'll see a black and white image of our mask. Let's choose to map this over white since we have kind of a dark green background. And with the white, we can easily see what our edges are like here. I'm going to take this back to our default selection to be able to uh, just reset all these values. There are a couple keyboard shortcuts I should mention. The F key will toggle between all these different views down here. Okay, so we can toggle through that list. The X key will take us out of Refine Edge for a second, so we're back to see our entire image. So if we want to see the actual starting place for our image, X will do that and also bring us back to Refine Edge. 
So I'm going to just fine tune this a bit. Drag my radius up, bring my contrast up. See, I'm looking for a little bit of difference here. I'm going to smooth this out just a bit. And I might just feather the edge a bit, just so I've got a real nice natural selection. OK, let's click OK. And we're back. So all we've done, we haven't actually extracted this. All we've done is refined our selection. So we used our quick selection tool to select it. And then we went up and refined our edges. So the next thing I want to do is save this selection. OK, so if I go up to select here and save selection, I want to call this flower. So give it a name. I want to save it to flower 3 JPEG. I want this to be a new channel here, an operation new channel. So I select OK. Now if I come up to my channels, you can see I've got all my RGB and my individual color channels. And now I've got my flower channel selected there. Thank you.